All right, hello, it's Sarah. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna make, basically, um, we're gonna make this Midori's uh, Traveler's Notebook insert. That's just called the file folder or something, the Midori file folder, but this is how it comes from Midori, just the craft color. And then I just put this pattern paper on there to kind of jazz it up. But you can make them out of pattern paper, um, Actually, pattern paper is not going to work as well as a file folder because you need at least 16 inches um, to get to do it with all one piece of paper. Um, so that's why a file folder, and these are the ones that you can get from the, the dollar spot at Target. And you get three in a pack, and they're different patterns and designs. I totally scrap lifted this from Inspired Blush. She has a tutorial as well on how she makes hers, but I basically copy the Midori one. So I wanted to go ahead and show you how to do that. It's really simple. The first thing you want to do is cut down your file folder to be um, 16 by 8 and 3 quarters. So the way I you can do that is just, I'll show you, just 8 on one side and eight on the other. I go, I cut off the ends. Sorry about the shine, my light is hitting it. But I put my, depending on what kind of cutter you have, paper cutter, I'll put the center seam at the eight inch mark and make sure it's all lined up and then cut this end off. I mean, I could actually could have done that with it folded in half, I should have. So I'm going to do that and make sure it's even. So I'm going to just line up this edge right here at 8 inches. And I'm just going to do that again and cut, cut both. My cutter could have done both edges at the same time. So now you just have a little bit of a shorter file folder. Now you're going to go for 8 and 3 quarters because the insert is actually 8 and a quarter. But you're going to need a quarter inch, I mean a half an inch extra on the bottom to fold up to glue to glue this piece up. So we're gonna cut it at eight and three quarters. So I'm gonna, again, just line that um, binding up there at eight and three quarters. And that's it. And you have this little piece of waste. I don't know, some of you smart people will think of something to use that for. So that that's all the cutting for right now. The next thing you wanna do is a uh, score. So I'm going to get my big old Martha Stewart scoreboard and I like to, I'm going to use my, this thing here, but all you have to do is score in at, I'm looking at my directions, three and three quarter from the end. So if you go three and three quarter from the end and then flip your folder around and do the same thing, three and three quarter, then you have the, the f four and a quarter that you need for the width of the book. I'll show you. So if you fold that down and this down and then you fold it in half, that's the size of your insert. So the next thing you want to do is just get a half inch along the bottom. Pick a side to be your bottom, it doesn't matter. And I just go a quarter, a half inch in. So this is at eight and three quarters, so I'm going to go to eight and a quarter. And then I'm going to flip it around and finish it off because I couldn't reach or it didn't reach. So now we have a score along the bottom and three along the middle. Now we're going to do some cutting. Um, the first thing you want to do is, here's how I do it. I fold it in like this, take my scissors and just do a little like a V right there. And then you're gonna do the same thing on this side. Hold it so it's, I mean, you can make sure it's scored really well so that you have a nice, so it stays together when you're cutting. But you're just gonna cut this, a little V, and this right here. A little V. And then all you have to do is cut this notch out. I like to go on top of the score line too. Like <clears throat> there's the score line is kind of like 
two lines and then there's a middle. I don't know if you know what I mean. But I go on the top along the top one because then the page will fold over and it won't um, bump in into the uh, tab that we're going to glue. So you're just going to cut off this end and this end. Both ends, cut those off. And like I said, I'm going along the top edge of that score line because then I'll show you like when you um, fold up your little flaps here, score those like get a good crease with your bone folder. But when you um, fold these over to glue, if it, if it bumps into the flap, just cut a little bit more off along the edge because it's okay. You're going to cover that. That's going to be, um, see this one needs, I think I'm going to trim a tiny bit more off this because you won't see it, but it'll just basically, um, it won't bump into the, that's much better. So now I have a nice flat pocket. So that's basically it, but now I want to give it this shape that this file folder has and you can do whatever you want you don't have to do it this way you can make it just cut a line from there to there i like to go uh two inches um trying to think i did it this way i'm going to do it this way again um get a sp i'm going to do a pencil i think um the tutorial showed her using um, the Frixion pens because I guess they erase. But I mean, a pencil's fine, and I'm gonna just try and cut from the, um, I'm gonna cut the line. So basically, you're gonna go down here to here. Hopefully you can see. <clears throat> we're gonna fold it in half, but we're gonna go down and down to here so that when we fold it in. So we're gonna go down, and I like to use my Tim Holtz ruler because you can really line up these the grid lines to get um, so I go down three quarters of an inch from the top, one, two, three, and make a little mark, just so I can see it. Then I'm going to go up from the bottom two and a half inches. And if you, this has grids all over it, so it's really nice. I line up a line on the bottom, and then I go up one, two and a half inches. Let's see if that's about right. See, so on here, I just measured it like this. So that's, that's about, it's approximately two and a half inches. So that's why I did that. Now they rounded their corners and everything. Um, and then, oh, I also come out from here a little bit too, um, about an inch. Just to make it, I'm, I really matched it to the design that the Midori one did. But that was just because I'm a copycat. So I mark an inch, actually I'll draw a line, and then I'm going to um, draw a line from this to the two inch mark I made down here. And then I'm going to cut. And I'm just going to hold it, you know, no, it doesn't have to be perfect. And go up. Totally not on the line. It's hard to do this on camera, but... Um, I'll fix it and then you go down and take this little notch out I'm just gonna fix this a little good enough now we glue although I did do one other thing there's this little um, slot in here and if you want to do that I'll show you I'll show you how to do that I'll go away and come back okay so to make the slit you're ju I'm just going to use my exacto knife and on here I basically just measured up it's two inches to the bottom of the slit so I just measured up two inches and it's about a half an inch in it's maybe um, five eighths inch in but anywhere close to that is good. So basically I just take my ruler again and I'm gonna not, I'm gonna make a mark. Actually, let's see. Um, this is not quite two inches, right? Let's see. Two inches is right about here. Oops, I thought that was a pencil. 
So two inches is right about here. And then you go in, we'll go in about three quarters. That's about three quarters right where I did that. Um, three quarters is right here. Wait, let me make another two inch mark, sorry. Two inches is right here. And three quarters is I like like I just use the side of the um, paper to make a straight line so like right about here I think let me see that does that look like I don't know, probably not even in the shot yeah that is the bottom that's the bottom line and then I just take my ruler and the Tim Holtz ruler has this metal edge to it so I just lay it down and I take my X-Acto knife and put it like right on the um, tip of the line and just push down and it's not exact but this is the inside and then I'll just kind of guesstimate and do it again like just a little bit below it and then I make um, I just connect it am I on the shot there yeah and connect it Oops, and I can take this little paper out. I love these file folders though. I love the material it's made of. So then you just go like this, close your folder up, and I just go like this and draw another um, slot mark there. Use my ruler because it's just easier to make nice and straight. And hold it up against it. And move it over. Oopsie, I totally, what's, what good was the ruler? I totally messed it up. I don't know if it went through, but I did mess it up. It went through. But you know what? I'll just leave it. I'll put, I think I'll put a piece of um, washi tape on the inside real quick, just because uh, that's what I have handy. I'll put this green, and you're not going to see this. It's inside the pocket but it, it might hold it together and really I just use this for um, like uh, to put a paper clip or something so I'm just gonna cut that off sorry about that guys of course I'm on camera and just kinda just to hold it and then I'll, we'll see what it looks like yeah you can totally see it that stinks all right, so now we're going to glue, but you're done. Basically, you're done. The only other thing I do is I use this. This is my um, We Are Memory Keepers Crocodile Corner Chomper, and this is the one that has a half inch and a quarter inch size, and I like to do um, a quarter inch, the whole thing. Um, actually, you know what? I'll do that after I glue, and I'm going to use my Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive, which I love. Uh, I think it really is a strong glue and it does dry quickly so that's why um, I tend to go to it all the time and you could use uh, your double-sided tapes that you have or um, you know any adhesive that you like but this one I really like you just have to hold it for a minute because this is like a glossy finish so just give it a press and just hold it and it will be good to go and the side it's a shame I did that because I really like this pattern this plays into a lot of stuff this um, like grayish black and white but then the pop of green it's really pretty I mean and I could just put washi under that or do whatever but I mean for now I think I'll just um, put a paper clip on it or maybe I won't even use this. I could use it for a, um, a cover if I cut it apart. So that's it. So like then the last thing I do is I just take and I go and I do corner rounds on all the corners. All four corners. And that way when you're using it, it has this little notch in the bottom and the top that goes in your Midori and... Um, it, it kind of would keep it from ripping because it's gonna it's gonna get ripped if you uh so here's another one I did same thing I did these two this one has uh 
some stuff in it. Um, what was I going to say? But yeah, see the notches? That way it's not going to rip when you use it. And then this is just, I turned this one inside out. So this was the other file folder that's this like checkerboard. But I wanted to use the pink. I wanted to have the pink side out. So it's the checkerboard on the inside. I just turned it inside out when I folded it. And this actually had marks. Like I don't know what happened to the, if the paper got like erasure marks on it. Something was under there. So I put washi over that. But so that's those two. So to make the smaller ones, I could show you that too. It's basically the same thing. Uh, you're just going to use, remember that whatever size Midori you have, just make this insert the same height as your, um, as your little notebooks are. So this one happens to be five and a quarter high, but you always have to use the tab. So you need another half inch on the bottom. So five and three quarters. And then this was, uh, I used a file folder, so I just leave, it's, let's say, oh my phone's ringing, four and, um, three and a half, and then this is another two and three quarters over. So I can give you the measurements for that. I was going to make one, but I want to show you something else. For the little one, it's uh, 12 and a half across, so the whole thing tw is 12 and a half going this way. This opened up and this opened up equals 12 and a half. So you can make it with a piece of 12 by 12 paper. This is 12 by 12 paper. It's just a half an inch shorter or maybe even just a quarter inch shorter. Yeah, it's just a quarter inch shorter, this little part right here. So it, it's not a big deal. And see, I put the slots in this one and this one I didn't put slots in. But I'm going to show you what I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a, um, a fabric dory. But I wanted to show you one other thing. Uh, so the measurements are, it's basically the same thing. You just cut, cut. I think my husband's call me. I'll go get it. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you was how to make an insert. Now, they're super simple. I saw this, um, you know what, guys? I don't remember. I can't remember who I saw this from, but I totally scrap lifted it. You know me. Um, the only thing is... Uh, I had one ready. Oh, here it is. Right here. All right. So I made this one earlier, and it's out of this paper that matches. This is, like I said, it's this die cuts with a view paper. The neon chic stack right there. The neon chic stack. But it's, um, it's like a thicker kind of like glossy paper. It's a really cool. And, of course, I mean, you know, I love the pink. And I ended up putting all pink. This is just printer paper. So it's basically like printer paper, and I just took all pink. I think I put 15 sheets. So when you fold it over, there's, it ends up being 30 sheets because I'm doing the Lister's Got a List right now, which is basically um, a list for every day of the month. So um, I figure 30 sheets is a good amount because then you have a page per day. So that's what I'm going to do here. I want to show you how I do that. So. Basically, I cut the printer paper down to um, five and a quarter. These, these inserts for my faux dory is, I bought my leather from Michael's and it's eight and a half by 11 inch sheets. So I just cut it in half to make two. So this is five and a half. So five and a half and five and a half is 11. So I got two five and a half inch books out of one sheet of leather. Also, these inserts that I had bought at Staples were what totally gave me the idea. These are by a company called Ecolo, and I don't know if they're the standard. I don't, actually I don't think that they are the standard size for field notes. I think field notes are a tiny bit smaller because these are five and a half. No, they're not five and a half because the, the book is five and a half. These are five and a quarter. So five and a half just fit perfect. But what I'm gonna do for these is a five and a half inch height on my covers, and then it's three and a half wide, yeah. So you need a seven inch piece of paper. So seven by five and a half, score it in the middle, and then I round my corners. And then for your printer paper, I just took the whole sheet of paper, like let's see, if. So I take a whole sheet of paper and I cut down several at a time. 
five and a quarter, five and a quarter, and I leave the long ways because I'll show you what I did. So after you've got your five and a quarter inch paper, I kind of just fold it in the middle in sections to kind of, because when it's bunched together, it's not going to all be the same length. So see how like some of it's, it's like that. It's kind of like a pyramid. The, the center pick pieces are taller and the outside ones are the shorter ones, right? That doesn't matter. We're going to just stick that in our book for now. And I actually made it a tiny bit shorter. That's what I, you know, you're going to play and fudge it yourself, but I make it like, I don't go to totally five and a quarter just because I don't like the way it hangs over. But anyway, so the, the next thing you do is I make this little template and this is, I wish I'm going to try and figure out where I got this from, but um, it's a saddle stitch, so basically you just take a piece of paper that's the same length as your little book, right? And you you take it and you just rip it off, make a little piece, make a template, fold it in half, so that's the spine. Then you fold it in half to make your middle, and then you fold this in two more places, so two and two. That gives you five holes, so there's two holes and two holes, so do it again. Fold it in half, and then fold it in thirds and that will give you five holes. So now that's your template. And I've used this lots of times, so my holes are, and I just draw a circle so you basically know where your hole is, but you lay it in the middle. So you take your pages, make sure you're in the center, and I happen to have this really cool tool right here, which you might not have this exact tool, but you might have one of these, which I'm gonna find it. This, I think, is a, um, what is it for? It's for, um, your brads, like, uh, oops, I just fell off the lid here. This is like a brad pusher downer thing. Have you ever seen these before? It's by We Are Memory Makers. We Are Memory Keepers. There it is. So this is like a brad thing, and then on the other end is a piercing tool. So it's a piercing tool, basically, right? But I just happen, I use this all the time, because these are um, Tolan Station, I don't know. These are for doing punch tin. I used to do, I've done it, but I, I haven't done it in forever. But I have several sizes and widths. I just happen to have this one, and I like it for, for doing this. But like I said, you just use this one. This will work perfectly fine, or whatever you have. And you line your um, paper up, your cover up, and your, you know what, first though, what I want to do? I rounded my corners. So the very first thing, and I'm glad I remembered this, but the very first thing, now this is just because I like it like that, but you don't need rounded corners. But if you want them, then you take, I mean, the, the chomper will do quite a few pages at one time. But I'm going to round just the binding corners. I don't need to do these yet. I'll show you why. But you definitely want to do your where your bind, um, yeah, it's called the binding, where the binding is going to be because I already did my um, cover. All right. Make sure it's all straight first, then chomp. These are awesome, those corner chompers. I remember when I first started paper crafting, how excited I was to get those. They were like my one of my faves. All right, so again, now put your book together, put all your paper together, line it up, and then put it in your cover, nice and straight, get it centered as best you can, open it to the center, and put your template in there, and I always do my center hole first, and just give it a push, it goes right through, it's not hard. Watch your fingers. I have stabbed myself because I'm hasty. Make sure, keep tucking it into the center and just push and twist. The other thing you're gonna need is, um, I guess it's called uh, an embroidery needle. Um, I should have mentioned that, but I use embroidery thread to do mine. You could use um, twine, you could use whatever type of um, string, you know, that you have in your stash. And there you go. Once you have your five holes punched, you can see that. I'm going to grab my embroidery um, 
needle. I have to find it. So for the other one, I used this pink. Oops, wait a minute, wrong one. I used the pink thread. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just going to cover my glue. Um, yeah, you can see that. It's like a light pink, and I like that because it kind of did that. Because I have white and I have cream, but I'm going to use this light pink. I'm almost running out of it, too. But this should be enough. I mean, I'm going to really be... Yeah, that'll definitely be enough. And then I have... This is like an embroidery needle, which it just means it has like a pretty big eye. So you can fit like a little bit of a wider um, floss through here. And I'll show you how what how easy a saddle stitch is. And I've done this before with three holes, but I was really happy to do the five holes and it's not any harder at all. So just basically start in the middle hole. Gotta get this lined up. Yep, and you can see the daylight um, <clears throat> I'll try to do it like this with right in front of me. You can see the light behind it. Um, so I'm going to go down through the middle and out the back and go up back in through the next hole over to the left and pull through. And I'll just leave a little tail out the middle. Go back down through the end and up through the second one again. So up through the second one. Come on. Why, why? It seems like it's shifted a bit. It's always on camera. I do this so fast when I'm not on camera. <laughs> okay, good. So it comes up through. And then you go skip the middle one and go in this one. And back and up through the end one. Came and whoop. going around a camera isn't exactly easy. All right, and then back down the second one. So really simple. Now when you come up the middle, you come up on the other side of the string. So leave this on this side, and I'm going to try and come up on the other side. And then you tie it. And the girl that did the tutorial tied hers in the inside the book, which I like tying it inside the book, but I'm sure you could tie it on the outside of the book or, you know, there's any different variation of this, but this is just really easy and simple. I do three knots. So that was one, two, three, and then I just cut it off even. I, I leave like a little half an inch and that's it now the next thing you have to do your binding is done but your pages are still sticking out all crazy right I'm just gonna make sure I get that nice okay so to make this nice and even and that's pretty even and it would never be like that if you um didn't do this next step I'm sure I have the Tim Holtz ruler and there is a metal edge on that I also have like um, no it's not it's just for sewing no that doesn't have a metal edge all right fine so this is just an exacto knife from the dollar store and it just has these blades it's kind of like a box cutter almost with a dollar and that's what I've been using but I definitely stand up and put pressure on this ruler because you don't want this to slide. I don't want to mess this up. I actually did the other one really nicely. So you and you take your time. You don't push hard with the blade. You actually go really soft over the paper. Just softly. You don't need to kill it cuz and just do it little by little. Make sure you hold the ruler steady. That's all. And pretty soon all your pages are cut evenly. I think we're almost there. One more slice. And look at that. So now you have a perfectly... Um, the only other thing I do, because I did round my edges, is I'm going to round the edges. So I just take a few uh, pages at a time. Maybe like a third of the pages. 
and I go in chomp I wonder I mean this is like a lot of pages but it does it this thing is so strong you can basically do like half your page Ooh, that's a little too much I'm gonna do I'll do a third a third and a third um, and that's basically it so the last thing I'll show you is Midori also and I got them when I bought my um, my actual Midori is the elastic bands that you use in your Midori I got this at Joann's and I have another pack this is called um, craft oh clubhouse crafts this is sparkle elastic cord um, but you don't I'm gonna make one just for the sake of showing you guys but basically this is the same um, like here's my real Midori right here I don't know what you what you call it like the same gauge or you know let's see if it says millimeter 2.74 millimeters 1.2 millimeters so I guess that's like the width of it but let's see of course I'm gonna have to use the pink right pink sparkle um, all you do to connect your books inside your Midori is you make a rubber band so for this one I'm gonna make sure that it's tight enough that it has some some pressure but it's not too tight that it's gonna pull too hard so right I just give it a little tug and then I'm gonna make my knot like right about here and I just take both the strands and pull them I don't know anything about what that type of knot is called but that's how I do it and then I just give it a tug yep so I'm just gonna leave it at that and I mean it's trial and error but I just cut it off and you take the center of this book that's how I do it I like to go with the centers the center of this book and the center of this book and you connect them spine to spine so they're connected now and then I take my insert and you go oh then you take your Midori oh sorry <laughs> I'm gonna take all these inserts out of here for a second just to show you how to load up your Midori and I had five, four inserts in this in here so this is my Midori basically it's just a piece of leather that I cut I cut, uh, put holes in and string elastic through there and then you basically just take your the one book and go under the elastic to the middle and then take your insert and grab that elastic again and go in there and you could even you could put another um, book in there if you want it so this is just one of the ones that I got at Staples and I could put that in there too so now I have the ones I made a folder so if you could put you could put some paper clips some note paper something a middle bet so there's three books and, a, and an insert in this and then I added charms to it of course because you got to make it cute and that's it all right, so that's all the faux dory stuff I have for you right now. Um, I hope you like that tutorial, and thanks for watching.